Well, Steve, uh, we just got to experience the probably the exact kind of moment that makes you love doing your work with Rancho Obi Wan, where we just saw a kid go crazy over a toy that's four times older than he is. And he uh, clearly has never seen it before, and his mom sort of vaguely recollects some of this stuff, but right. that's sort of the fun of Star Wars. I and mean, the fun for me of having the exhibit here at Toys R Us is sharing it with, with fans, collectors, and kids who are just coming into Star Wars really for the first time with all the excitement around the new movie and Rebels uh, on TV. Uh, it's uh, a very cool period to be a Star Wars fan. What was it about Toys R Us' uh, approach and the, the whole Force Awakens, Force Friday, uh, that made you want to come across the country and haul a bunch of your collection out here? Well, and... they, they gave us a call and said, would you be interested? <laughs> and, you know, really, so many of the items, when I look at them, have price tags from Toys R Us. So I've been buying Star Wars at Toys R Us since the beginning, since 38 <laughs> years ago. And, um, and the fact that they wanted to set up sort of a, a survey, not just the oldest pieces or the most expensive, but really a survey of Star Wars toys through the different eras, and let me be a little cheeky on things like the uh, the sound chips from 1999 and the bulked up, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker figures from 1995. And, um, so I've had some fun with it, and you know, some some rare pieces and some pieces that people will remember with fondness. With a new movie on the horizon. What is the value to you of being able to look back on what came before? Well, I mean, one of the things I've done since uh, my first book came out in 1992 was to sort of inform fellow collectors about what was out there. A lot of people thank me or blame me uh, for uh, the first book, uh, From uh, Concept to Screen to Collectible, for letting them know how much stuff there was out there. you got to realize this was before the internet, before uh, eBay before Amazon, you, you didn't know about these things. And to see pictures of foreign items you didn't know about, to see pictures of food items and prototypes, and it started a lot of people on the collecting field. And so I, I sort of have an obligation, I think, and it's an <laughs> obligation I bear um, with, with great joy and, and have a lot of fun with the sharing the collection with kids of all ages. Aside from the iconic logo being on the box, what does it take for something to be Star Wars, in your opinion, for something to really breathe the franchise? You know, originally I would have said years ago, I probably would have said, well, you know, it's really got to look like the characters and, and the action figures need 30 points of articulation. <laughs> but there is something sometimes ineffable about what turns you on about Star Wars. And so when Little Galactic Heroes came out, they were obviously made for kids. Kenner had attempted to do a preschool line. They finally did a, a small one with Ewoks, but never that successful. And Galactic Heroes was made for kids, but it excited me and excited a lot of collectors because it excited the kid in all of us. And so it's that feeling you have when you see a Star Wars item out there, whatever it is can of Campbell's soup with the Star Wars label that's you know, now in the stores, and you know that that's the kind of thing that's going to get disposed of. Those things really appeal to me too as a collector, because that shows how deep and broad the Star Wars phenomenon has been all over the world. I collected chicken packages from France for episode one. I mean, you know, <laughs> crazy stuff. But again, it shows the, the phenomenon of Star Wars is both worldwide and covers now three generations. So, about a 20-page catalog, an 18-hour live global reveal, what's the first thing that's got to be added into the collection at Rancho Obi-Wan? There are two things that I really love. Number one, when BB-8 came out on the stage live at Celebration, I just, wow, I mean, it just, I was eight years old, you know? And um, so I, I definitely want to get a couple of the BB-8 toys. And, um, and I love the Spin Master Legendary Yoda because this takes technology to the latest. I mean, you can have toys with technology and they're sort of, okay, well, so what? I mean, I remember the first Star Wars uh, you know, Battlefront game with little lights and sound. <laughs> you know, gee, that was great. But this, this is a toy that you can do a force push and does all these lightsaber moves, turns around 360 degrees, you can talk to it, it responds. 
things like that excite me, and that I will definitely take out of the package both of those.